And so the thing that stops us from walking in this spiritual dimension are things that were trained in us fear and timidity and all of those things now have become enemies to our spirit nature but have you ever had a moment where your spirit soul and body aligned with something where the moment God spoke it to you your mind didn't fight it and you felt the surge of the anointing flow through your body. It is in those moments you feel, you just feel invincible. Like you can do anything. That's why you have to keep coming to church. Because most of those synergized moments happen when we're in the presence of God together. That's why when we get together, there's a corporate anointing. That's why you can walk in that building and feel defeated. But you get in under the worship and under the corporate anointing. And all of a sudden, you have faith start rising in you. And hope start rising in you because we're all spirit beings and we have the ability to infect one another with our atmospheres you need to touch somebody and say that's why to sit next to me you gotta be spiritual you gotta be spiritual you got to be spiritual. I got to be able to pick you up in the Wi-Fi. I got to be able to sense you. And when we get together, all of our resurrected spirits functioning in faith and hope and love, and then the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes, there ain't a devil in hell we can't take down. So this morning we cry with the Apostle Paul when he says in Philippians 3, Oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. We have got to now plumb the length, the width, the depth, and the heights of knowing how to walk in a spiritual dimension. Where you can look at any situation and you can say, okay, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. See, all those scriptures will make sense to you because what he's talking about is through the nature that he gave me, I can do it. You do understand when the Bible talks about Christ in you, what he's talking about. Physically, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. So how is he in you if he's at the right hand of the Father? Because this is spiritual. He said in John 17, I'm leaving, but I'm going to leave something with you. My peace I'm going to leave with you. My joy, I'm going to give it to you. He's talking about the resurrection of your spirit. He's talking about how literally I'm going to put myself in you when you are born again. Can I have... Can I have three people? Can I, can I have you? Can I have you? Can I have you? Let me, can, can you come up here? Can I borrow you? Yes. I want you all to stand in a line facing that way. You get behind him and you get behind him. Okay. This is what happens. Through Adam, you contracted spiritual death. And so... The, the dead spirit of Adam, the Adamic nature, produced your spirit, trained you in fear, trained you in sin. Satan became your master. 
because he has authority over you through spiritual death. This is why God stripped him of his power over your life by raising your spirit from the dead. Because if he can't control your spirit, he ain't got no business controlling your life. We'll move into that in the next session. And so you were trained, 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 trained. And then Jesus comes and says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation and takes this nature out of you. And he doesn't replace it with another nature. He replaces it with his nature. You didn't get another spirit. You got his. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Do you, you got his. His is in you. His nature is in you. That's why the Bible says he is the firstborn now among many brethren. Now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But right now, all of us have the same identity, which means if you are to hold up Jesus' spirit and then put your spirit right beside it, they are identical twins. So now what you've got to do is learn how to let that nature dominate you. Now you've got to learn the capacity of how to walk in that. Do you know you have the kind of peace that is in you that goes to sleep in a storm? <laughs> Did you... <laughs> Did you remember Jesus' response to the storm beating a boat? Just knocking everything around the disciples screaming in Jesus' sleep. <laughs> so the next time all hell breaks out in your life and your family is asking, what are we going to do? You're going to tell them I'm going to bed. 